um, but we, yeah, let's get started. Um, Rob, like I know, the, you know, everybody knows you here, but maybe like you can give a bit of uh, context on, you know, how you got here, let's say, and uh, what's your journey been uh, so far? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, to, to people who like don't know me in here, I mean, I, I started, uh, you know, like 2016. Um, I started minting actual, like, you know, they weren't calling it, they weren't called NFTs back then, but uh, I was minting on the the Bitcoin blockchain at the time. So, um, you know, found a found a crew of uh, internet meme misfits and uh, started making uh, rare Pepe memes on on the Bitcoin blockchain, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and that and that period was from 2016 to 2017, and then uh, and then that ended. And then there was like this long gap of like silence because we were in a, like a bear market at the time. So a lot of projects kind of burrowed under and uh, went, went back to living my life and, you know, still doing crypto art stuff on, on the side, of course. But um, but I was just traveling and just trying to do my music thing at the same time. And uh, and then when I, you know, after a couple of years, you know, I got back in and kind of like surveyed the landscape. And then I started seeing, you know, uh, like the crypto art gallery phase kind of come in. So I saw, you know rareart.io show up i show i saw um known origin pop up super rare and those were the three platforms primarily that were around and and then i signed up to rare art first um they're actually one of the first uh platforms to actually go defunct like you know they uh they disappeared all the artwork disappeared um and so and then i then i moved over to, moved over to uh, known origin started minting pieces there and then I then I segued into super rare and then um, and then uh, you know was was doing everything wrong then and made a bunch of mistakes and or what I or what other people thought were mistakes uh, and then I'm, I'm known for making a, a controversial trash can which kind of like was uh, uh, it was more like a more like a joke but uh, I was I was making commentary on a lot of like restrictions I was having at the time and then I got removed from super rare the piece was removed uh, the trash art movement began. There was a bunch of artists that just started making trash cans in like solidarity with it. And then for about two years, it was like this ideological debate on like what is art and what you know, like what are we doing in in, in the crypto art space and stuff. And so, um, yeah, I've uh, been kind of uh, traversing the space and uh, was able to, you know, make pieces on Rarible when they first started out because I had no other place to go. And um, and then I ran into McCole during that time and Nicole <laughs> got to see what the, the the wackiness that was t taking place and uh and it's been great to have her along the ride and um and uh from that point on uh I think I think now I mean it's kind of funny cuz uh last christmas you know my piece was reinstated on super rare I got back on super rare they they put me on I haven't minted anything yet but um but yeah I mean it's been it's been kind of a wild ride and um a lot of stress testing in the in the space and uh and just kind of poking, you know, poking the wall and seeing what pops up. And I don't know, just uh, just a lot of, I've been having a blast, basically. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much where I am at this point. I mean, open to anybody to ask questions here, by the way. Uh, anyone want to jump in, uh, please, please do so. But maybe what I can, uh, you know, maybe to like give a, also like a bit of context for s s people who weren't at the time of like trash art and how that started um, and you know, the history behind that a little bit leading up to also now with your recent exhibition in Paris that dedicated to trash art. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to add more context to that, I mean, I, I, was, I was, you know, making artwork that, uh, you know, I, I use this, uh, this app called Photomosh, and it's, you know, I just use it as like an extra filter on my artwork, you know. So I, I, do, I do stuff on like Photoshop and um, tons of different, you know, apps and stuff like that. And then, I, you know, I basically... I'll use anything I can for for whatever a piece that I'm making. It depends on what it is, but uh, but it was kind of funny in the beginning uh, when I was making some pieces and using this 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 app and stuff. When people found out, at first they liked the artwork, and then when they when they found out, uh, they didn't like the artwork, which I thought was kind of funny. And so um, and so there was there's some contention in the community about uh, you know like 
should we have this type of artwork on super rare we shouldn't have this garbage this trash artwork and this and that so so the moniker came out of like some collectors that were like uh kind of dogging on my work and stuff and um and then of course like my reaction was to make more of it you know it was not to like be like oh people don't like my artwork no no no. Like, i just literally cranked it to 11 i was like i'm gonna make more you guys are gonna enjoy this and so so super rare was kind of like my outlet for like making more of this work and stuff and then uh basically it's just you know it got to it got to a head and then i i i put out this piece called the 64 gallon toter and it's just it's it's a it's a trash can just straight in your face and it's glitched and um then they thought i took the photo from a home depot website um it was really just a fast google search to be honest because i really just want to get my point across and um so the piece was removed that was removed and then after that there was a there was an article that was written about um about the whole incident um it was on coin telegraph but after that article was written a lot of people read it and they just kind of um they basically kind of vibed with it and then there was a lot of artists i ran into um as i moved to rarible because that was the one of the only places i could make artwork and so um so when i was minting there i ran into a bunch of other artists and stuff and um and yeah i know it's great i I met a whole new family but then they you know they were kind of all kind of all just heated the call and they just uh they just started making all this uh, trash can artwork and like um homages or remixes of the of the, of the trash can itself and uh, the the trash can actually became some sort of like symbol of um like freedom of expression in the space and um and uh you know we're trying to restrict the whole gatekeeping thing from coming in even though it's 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 been pretty prevalent now but um i don't know it's it's it's, it's taken off from there and so so the last two years um there's been so many artists like from around the world that have made like trash art and just maybe maybe just one or two pieces or some people just have actually taken off on their own and just made a bunch of stuff um and so um so all of this led up to um my piece getting reinstated on super rare so after two years it was like right before christmas um i checked my account and all of a sudden they they put my 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 art piece back up they didn't say much about it and I, I just checked my account i was kind of blown away i was like oh my god they, they put it back up but i think it was because um after all those years and stuff uh and the support from all the artists from from, from the whole space really um i think they i think they finally came to their senses and, and and truth be told it was cool like zach from super rare said like um you know that was one of our biggest misses and this and that like he didn't have to say that but that was really awesome that he did and uh, so they reinstated that and they put me back put me back um but um leading up to the trash art show in paris so that um the gallery is called uh, uh levant gallery vasen and uh two ladies uh, albertine and uh, caroline they they contacted me and they said they wanted to do a show and so um you know they, they said you know you can curate all the artwork and uh, just just you know send us all the pieces that you think are like the most uh you know what you what you what you consider like uh what like actual trash art or whatever and so basically the whole show is like it's more it's more like a family show than anything i was able to to um kind of try to remember all the all the great pieces that i saw that were made within the last two years and then uh submitted to them probably about 75 pieces and then they um they put the whole show together it's still running right now it's out in uh, yeah out in paris um and yeah the show is super awesome they have all these like different ways of displaying them they have them on various laptop screens they got them on ipads they got them on phones on the wall they got a projection screen with overlapping different stuff um and they have uh they have all these like mini like you know raspberry pi square screens and stuff so it's just a bunch of different ways to display the stuff and so uh yeah i went to go visit them and on the opening day and it was super cool but yeah it's been this whole trash art thing has been like two two years plus in the making really and it's just uh basically it was just like a big ideological debate on like what is you know deemed quality art in this space you know and and who's to say um what that is and so i think i think the biggest thing that came out of this is that um on like you know crypto art twitter it's like a big you know it's a big town square and there's a lot of people shouting and this and that and so and there are some people shouting like like this is the way things are supposed to be and so so I think like this trash art thing was like a counteraction to that saying like no well, there's actually um, a lot of people in the space that disagree with that and um, and it doesn't matter how much money you have 
it's like the, the the people kind of made that call which is cool and i'm totally blessed by that i mean uh, I, can't, I can't thank everybody enough for that it's kind of crazy because i almost i don't i almost don't feel like it's me anymore it's like everybody else doing their thing um but uh but yeah that's pretty much a synopsis of the whole like trash art like drama or epoch or whatever you want to call it but uh, uh it's, it's it's just been a blessing to see it all take place though and i think uh and i think at the beginning of all this stuff you know the platforms and the artists and stuff we're all learning you know i think a lot of us were we had preconceived notions of what this space is supposed to be and how it's supposed to go even for me sometimes i'm wrong as well um but yeah i think the, i think that whole uh, the whole last two years has been like that uh, constant like debate, and then uh, it's nice to see a good result come out of it. Did you guys hear me? Sorry, but I thought if I yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, like, oh my god! <laughs> Thanks for giving the context there. Um, I, I have a question, and this is just, it's sort of a random question, but like, what are, um, is there some, like, a weird part of crypto art lore that isn't, uh, isn't necessarily known to a lot of people that, you know, is, is either, like, a funny story or just, like, weird stuff or just, just something of the sorts? Um, I'm trying to think, you know, a lot of weird stuff happened on, on Rarible, actually, you know, um. You know, I, I, you know, with with the the crypto art stuff, like especially like the the PFP stuff, you know, a lot of the stuff, you know, uh, you know, um, the stuff that happened on Rarible was really important for that stuff because I remember, you know, like I keep saying, like you know, Pranksy, like, um, you know, was the, was 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 almost the person to like not blame, but like was the was the first person to really drop these crypto punks all over the place, and and Rarible at the time was. Um, See, there was a there was like a struggle between like, um, you know, on OpenSea back in the day, OpenSea had like the sidebar, you know, like people forget like the sidebar. There weren't there weren't that many projects on on OpenSea at the time, so so they had this like sidebar of just like you know like if you even if you had a store contract, like you'd see your name up there, you know, if you were making some good sales and stuff. So like you know every day we would see um, on the left like who was doing really well, and so. Um, you know, for a long time, Super Rare was 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 pretty much you know the dominant force on OpenSea for a while, and then um, you know then Rarible came around, and then when I started making pieces on Rarible and, and you know Max Osiris and some other artists and stuff, um, it it was kind of cool because at first it was really difficult to sell pieces there, and after a while we were able to to get collectors to jump over and start buying our work again which is like oh thank god like like you know we're not totally dead in the water you know and uh, a lot of people thought like rarible was the was the cheap place to mint you know um and so we kind of were just messing around with that and toying around with this saying you know screw that let's see let's see how far we can pull it and so um so we started doing pretty good on there started selling pieces consistently and so um next thing you know you know more artists started jumping over um, a lot of artists that couldn't get on Super Rare, couldn't get on Known Origin, would jump to jump to Rarible as well, and so all of those all of those artists combined started selling, you know. And um, the next thing you know, um, you know, other projects started moving over to Rarible too, because it wasn't just about crypto art; it was like a whole marketplace. It was like another OpenSea, but it had a contract on OpenSea, so it was like weird. It was like like almost like a Trojan horse. It was like. It's, it has a contract in OpenSea, but it's also a marketplace. It's just it was, it was weird, and so next thing you know, we see Rarible at like the top of the top of the list, you know, and that was like a big kind of like ha ha, like we proved everybody wrong, you know what I mean? Um, so at the time, it was like we were kind of rooting for Rarible because it was it was a nice like it was good for OpenSea to have like competition like that, you know. I, th I think it was good to just to just have that kind of you know back and forth kind of thing going on. And so a lot of collectors finally changed their opinion on Rarible and what it was and what it meant. Um, and so and so Rarible actually like became a catalyst for a lot of other projects, whether it be gaming or um, you know just just whatever else didn't fit the crypto art mold, you know. And so um, so I think I don't know. I think like the story of like Rarible is kind of interesting. Um, never really gets talked about, um, but it was really important for a lot of artists that had no other place to go because well for one hick and dunk didn't exist um 
you know, and a lot of a lot of people now, like if they want to mint cheaply, they you know, they, and affordably, you know, they they'll go to Hikanunk, and it's a good way to start. Um, but back then, you know, it was like the only places you could do it were either like if you were in, quote unquote and in, like independent, you can only go to uh, OpenSea or Rarible, and that was it. You know, make your own OpenSea contract or just go to Rarible and just mint on their on a contract. And so, uh, so, so, yeah, so Rarible's story, as far as, like, being able to, like, harbor new artists, I think, really gets overlooked. And a lot of people, like, that I'm friends with now, like, um, they're doing pretty well. And, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of them started there, you know. And some of them have not even, they just prefer not to go to Super Rare or prefer not to go to Known Origin. They just do their own thing, but they're, they're still doing quite well. So, um, so that's one of them. I'm trying to think... Uh, um, oh, you know, it's, you know, it's not actually funny right now, actually. Um, I can just kind of like riff, riff on this a little bit. Uh, there is another project um, that really never gets talked about, but uh, uh, there's a lot of sales going on right now. Um, uh, so, so, you know, the, the, the rare Pepe project was, was you know, uh, it, it finished on, around 2017. And so, um, so there's, a, there's an artist, his name is Rare Skrilla, and... Uh, and like there's this joke going around about like you know the fake rares you know like any any rare pepe that wasn't made in the collection is considered a fake rare it was like it was like an old meme joke that we had um for years you know and so so he decided to like make a fake rare collection right um and now actually if you like if you go to fake rare directory.com like all the artwork that's on there right now are from artists that have been contributing to the new project so it's like a new rare pepe directory um, it's just a, it's just an add-on now. But, but the cool thing about this is that all the artists that have like, you know, have have made their way in this space have like secretly been minting on there and like contributing to the new collection. And so, um, so I think that's another one that a lot of people don't even really know that's happening or even uh, or even know how to penetrate because you have to use you know uh, counterparty and, and the Bitcoin network and stuff. Um, so that's what's going. That's what's going on too. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, those are those are some things that like I had no idea about, especially the variable thing. Um, I, I guess I don't want to. How much time do we have? Because I don't, I don't want to take time for other people's questions, but I, I have another one I'd like to ask. I guess it's directed towards you, Nicole. How much how much time do we got here? Uh, you have an hour and a half. So oh, bet. Time. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, one hour. Yeah. Okay, I got one more. Um, what a what was the start of the rare pepes? Because I like I'm I'm a, I'm a zoomer, so I, like I it's on like Twitch, like everything. Like um, I've seen like the pepes are also always in the like, zeitgeist, and I don't know. There's I have this like affinity towards them, but like what was the like, like how why what everything to do with the the beginning of the rare pepes? Yeah, I think, um, you know, because I, 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 I've been asked that question recently, like, you know, like, why? Like, why Rare Pepe's, you know? And I think it's just, it was like a, like, unspoken truth for the rest of us that was like, um, I think it would be good to, it, or I, I, we, we all just thought it would be probably good that um, using one of the most popular memes on the internet is probably the most propagative and, like, uh, tradable um, and also funny. Um, I mean, because I, I have my own yeah yeah and you know i mean i had my own reasons as to why i i went in like my personal reason was like you know i was using see like counterparty it's like this it's this uh protocol that lives on top of bitcoin um you connect to it with your bitcoin with your bitcoin wallet and stuff but it's like an exchange right so when you connect to it like you connect to it you see the exchange and you see all the like the the current assets that pop up and like the first time i saw it i saw a rare pepe asset on there and from my like internet meme knowledge of the past, you know, like uh, I, I keep citing this like ridiculous uh, event that occurred, and it was like this one guy, and he like he went on eBay and like he put up like a, a zip file of like over like like a thousand Pepe's or, or something ridiculous, where he collected all of them from the internet or something, and he put it in a zip file, and then he put it up for sale, like he was actually trying to sell them, you know. And this was before crypto or anything, so it was like one of those meme jokes, you know. And I always thought that was funny, you know, because for one, I'm like, that's a hard job, 
like trying to go around and, and collect all of them, you know, like, um, and so, um, so that was in the back of my head. But when I saw the actual asset on the counterparty exchange, it like clicked. I'm like, there's somebody out there that's like, that wants to make this a reality, you know, like they actually want to make this like tradable. And, uh, and so for me, I, I was actually laughing when I saw it. And so, uh, so I had, to, I had to investigate and figure out what was going on. And so, um, then after, after I did a little research, I found uh, that there was a telegram room and it was only like, I can't even remember, but it was like only 10 of us, you know, and like the series didn't even start. Like it was actually just like one guy that we, we call him like rare Pepe Mike. And he's the one that started the very first one, the Nakamoto card. Um, but he just did that for fun. And we, and we were kind of just battering around ideas. And then it came to the point where like, we need to like make a series of this stuff. And then, um, and then that was that. And so, so back in the day, it was like, we didn't even have a platform to actually like show the artwork. You know, we, we were just making tokens with the asset names, right? Because back then we didn't even have, um, we didn't have any apps or any way to actually show like the NFT itself, like the, the actual image. So what we had to do is we had to start like the Rare Pepe directory site, uh, rarepepedirectory.com. And then that was the way we could actually view the artwork. So like, if you go there today, like, the the website hasn't even changed. It's been there. It's been the same since, um, shoot, since since we started it, right? So so you go there, but actually that website was the platform. That was the only way we could see the artwork, and so there was no there was no marketplace of where we could actually trade the work and see the work at the same time, like we have it on Open OpenSea and stuff. So um, so yeah, all that stuff was going on. But like the reasons is why we were using using it. I think it was just an unspoken truth that we all knew that like. Like uh, Pepe was like, like one of those memes that anybody can take a part of, like or just be a part of. And if they wanted to make like, even if it was a shitty meme, like they could, they could, as long as it was funny and it was dank, right? Like the dank meters through the roof. It's like okay, we'll put it in the collection, you know. Um, and so yeah, I, I guess it was just one of those things. It was like it was, it was perfect for like um, starting some type of community, some type of meme community or something like that, and um but yeah no i got crazy after a while had a lot of people from all over the world come in the, the telegram room was like 1600 plus to 2000 and it was like crazy it got it got pretty wild for a while so uh yeah that's that's a little bit of the, the beginnings of it thanks for that i, I wish there was reactions here because I'm, I'm like dying listening to this the absurdity of of like how this has come down or how this has happened is it's it's hilarious it, it's something out of like a fucking tv show yeah, no, it's, I mean, I mean, it's so funny because like, uh, there was been a long time where it was, it won't, it almost became a joke, but it was like, you know, from 2017 on, right, we had like, you know, all of a sudden like CryptoPunks came out, Crypto Kitties, and then they played the whole like, like the PR game, you know, they were, they were going out there and, and, and doing the, the you know, the, the shows and going on the stage and presenting like, this is an NFT, like, the, like the first time I heard NFT was from the, like the CryptoPunks, you know? Like they came up with the term, and at the time I was actually kind of laughing because it was like, I was like, "What the heck's an NFT?" You know, like uh, like another buzz term, like you know. So for me, I was already kind of like laughing about that, and so, so um, yeah, no, there was a lot of a lot of wacky stuff going on, but um, yeah, no, I mean, there there was a concerted effort for a while to like put the rare Pepe's in the back end, like like to pretend like they didn't exist, and and the constant joke was like. You know, I talk with some of the, the older cats, man, like Joe Looney and the rest of them. Like, there's this term we had. It was called greenwashing, where it was like there would be newspaper clips, like, written about, like, crypto punks and crypto kitties and, like, nothing about rare pepes at all. And I'm like, wait a second. Like, this, like, like uh, some of the crypto punks guys used to come into our room and try to figure out what the hell we were doing. And they just, you know, a lot of us were like, oh, they ran off with the idea or whatever, you know. But, um but yeah, like there was there was this there was a point in time where a lot of people tried to ignore that like memes were kind of like the the basis of all of this, you know. And uh and of course all of us were like, nope, though nope. like we were <laughs> like we were doing some stuff, you can't lie, it's on the blockchain, and then soon enough, you know, that I think that's the beauty of the blockchain too, is like like we actually use the blockchain for its purpose. Like we actually said, look, here's the proof. You cannot lie about this, you know? And so uh, so there's a funny, a lot of funny stuff that took place, you know, but yeah, I mean, b memes built the house of crypto art. Like it's the truth, man. You know?
uh, I have a I have a question related to sort of trash art, but more in the you know like now that you've now that trash art is sort of established, right? And you have sixty four gallon totter, and and you know the comparisons to that. I mean, like both of us, I've talked to you on spaces, right, where it's like we've compared like sixty four gallon totter to like Marcel Duchamp's uh, fountain, right? And then I've been noticing in this space at least that you know a lot of the trash art is still sort of very tied to the actual image of an, uh, the trash can, right? But I, I was curious, like, how do you see the evolution of the trash art, right? Like, my, to me, I saw it, like, the first step was you opening up the, the trash art collection to whoever wanted to, like, sort of be in it. And to me, I was like, yo, that's actually really crazy, because then imagine if you've had, like, an impressionist collection or, like, a multitude of impressionist collections, right, that somebody would put mint in, and you would no longer have to Like, and like, oh, I think this is that, and I think this is that, the artist has sort of told you. But, like, how do you see the evolution now of the, of the... I think you might be breaking up a bit, or maybe it's just me. Um, but I no, got the yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, like, basically, like, you know, like, where do you see the evolution of this trash art going? And, you know, that's a, that's a great question, and it's, like, something that I ask myself, like, every day. Because, um... Like, uh, there's a couple of things I saw, you know, for example, like, you know, Matt Fury, like, um, when we were making Rare Pepe's back in the day, like, we saw a lot of stuff that was, was happening to him, like, um, but, you know, during the 2016 election and a lot of crazy stuff that was going on, like, alt-right, like, hijacked, you know, Pepe's and, like, all this stuff. And, and, um, and then we got to see, like, you know, Matt Fury, like, reacting to all that and, like, you know, he killed Pepe like at a certain point in time. Like he made a like a like a cartoon where like he killed off his own character, you know? And it was like um a lot of us were like really kind of like sad about that, you know? I was like, oh man, like like that's your own creation, you know? And so um and so for me, like uh, after seeing all of that, um I realized that like even he had no control of of his own you know of his own meme basically you know like like the internet chose his frog to be something that just gets copied and copied and copied over and over like an organism you know and so um so with, with the trash art stuff i'm kind of like i'm watching it like as as like an observer in a sense because because even people ask me they're like oh what is trash art and stuff like that and it's and it's sometimes it's hard for me to answer because there's a lot of people that have taken into different like different perceptions and interpretations and stuff to to the point where i you know i mean it's got its own like feed now like if you go to like hashtag trash art you know it's like a daily feed and just everybody's doing their own thing so in me like for me now it's this it's turned into a like a crypto art meme you know and so um but when i look back at like all the stuff that like matt fury had to deal with you know so for me like i have it hands off it's like it's like i i made my trash can for various reasons and stuff and like some people do like have the same interpretations of it, but I think now it's like um, I'm actually kind of like um, more interested on like where it goes from here. Um, and always, there's always a question of like you know how long does it go or how long is it is it going to go? It just keeps going. So um, you know there's there's a, there's going to be a trash art show in downtown LA, and I just kind of found out about this like a, like last week, and. Um, and it's super cool. I'm gonna go visit, you know. But like, I I told everybody, I'm like, this wasn't even me. This is like other people that are like that are vibing with this and, and doing their own thing with it. So I, I like that, um, and it's, I'm totally blessed by that. But but another part of me is like, um, like I'm definitely keeping my hands off as far as like trying to dictate where it's supposed to go. Like I made it for my own reasons, and um, I feel like a lot a, like a chapter of that is kind of closed. You know, ever, ever since Super Rare put it back on, I think that was like. That was like a win for everybody else, like in my opinion, you know, like everybody that supported it, you know, that that was like the uh, like that we won the debate about 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 the, the we won, we won the artistic debate in that regard. Um, but but what goes after that is will be interesting, you know. There's like a lot of different like interpretations of of uh, of trash art now. Like I, even for me too, it's funny like when an art piece hangs around long enough. And this is this is something that I've learned too. It's like you know, like if you make a piece and um, it manages to just exist and keep existing in like maybe the public eye or whatever. Like um, it has 
it has more of a chance to have different perceptions be imprinted upon it. So, like, for instance, like, you know, I made it for reactionary reasons. I was pissed off that, like, you know, my buddy Max was removed and I was I was getting, you know, critiqued on my own work and, like, people were calling, calling my shit garbage and stuff. And um, so at the time, the reason why I made it was for a specific reason. But now, like, I look at it and, like, I have my own, like, different interpretations. Like, like for, like, for example, like, um, you know, I was looking at, you know, the, you, you see a lot of the works that are like actual trash cans and stuff, but but now I'm like looking at it like and from a different perspective, like like well what you know what is, what is civilization going to look like you know a hundred years from now? Like are we even are we even going to use trash cans? You know, or are we going to have some more like like efficient way of disposing disposing of waste? You know, so like I was making the joke that like you know maybe in the future people will be looking at this like oh. The, they actually had to have those things in their house like that's gross or like you know what i mean just 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 wacky stuff like that and so um so but the, but the point i'm making is like it's been around long enough where i'm like looking at it from a different perspective and it's like i'm not looking at it like my own work anymore it's really weird but um it is interesting though um and i think um i think that's the cool thing about art as well it's like um even your own pieces like years from now you can you can look at them from a totally different perspective because it's you know it's out of your headspace and um, it's been sitting there for a while and then you kind of look at it and you're just maybe you, you are a different person from, than 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 you were when you made it. So um, so yeah, those, those are I mean I kind of took this off the road, but um, like those are the thoughts that I I have about like where this thing can go and what it's going to turn into. So yeah. I I I think it's actually like yeah I think. I, it's cool because like I I I always looked at trash art as like another way of like you know it's like the same thing right like Duchamp does the fountain that gets established as like you know the 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 usage of found art and the creation of found art and all of that and then you look at found art now and it's completely changed and it's like I I also think it's really interesting because uh the the pieces where you ripped off the the logos the Ethereum logo and you minted those on Superair. Um, because to me, I was like, all right, now it's sort of, it, it, it's acceptance, it's into the public sphere and in the crypto art sphere, sort of opens up the door for actual utilization of found art within the digital space. Because like, or actually, let me just ask you, like, how, how do you think found art will actually be utilized in the future? Do you think people will just be like ripping off random JPEGs from like, you know, their, their Google feed and their nine gag feed, like we do with uh, memes now? and like. That's the evolution, or do you think it's going to be a bit different, just given the nature of like we need verifiability and uh, the sort of royalties and sources in the space? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'll, I might be partly to blame that for the future, but um, I think it's just the, the matter of fact of like of how you present it, or or you know what your real story is behind it. You know, I think a lot of people can just you know call bullshit on pieces when they when they see it. You know, and it's just like. Um, it's just like how the artist is really wants to display it. You know, I mean, for me, like the um, the Bitcoin and Ethereum logos, um, the reason why I minted those, well, obviously is because the Bitcoin and Ethereum logos are some, some of the most iconic, um, you know, logos in the whole entire space. And, um, and you know, it kind of dawned on me that it, was, it would be interesting to kind of play with the fact that uh, you know, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin logo and the Ethereum logo are Creative Commons, you know, um, and they were made specifically for that because they wanted that their intention was that they want they wanted the prop. They wanted the, the both, you know, currency networks to to grow and, and to be this, you know, like world type of currency. Right. So like to to put a copyright on the actual logo would be actually very limiting to the actual network and stuff, the network effect of it. And so so for me, it's like. Um, the, those those two logos are, are very very powerful um but also the fact that they're creative commons it's like uh, it, it dawned on me i was like oh man like uh it would be really interesting to play with um making like a crypto ready-made um and and actually reappropriating a, a bitcoin logo for as, as as actual art because you know it's stated right there you can use it for commercial purposes and like i put it i put that in the description and it says you can be you can totally used for commercial purposes, and then I put in this in in this case art, you know. 
Um, and I think, uh, you know, it's like everybody uses the Bitcoin logo constantly for everything, you know, and it's like sometimes you just got to sit there and just look at it, you know, and like, I don't know, like I look at it and I'm just like this, this logo is just insane. Like, and what it's just, what it's been a part of and like, uh, this whole like revolution that's going on with, uh, just with everything with it. Um, so those were the, those are the reasons why I did it, you know? And so I think there's going to be like a lot of like people that just copy and paste shit and then just mint it and be like, haha, like yours, you know, but I think a lot of, you know, I think a lot of like other artists and critics and stuff, they'll be able to see through it if it's, if it's genuine or not. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like, uh, um, I'm weird like that where it's like the intention like is embedded in the work. Like it, it's not coded in or anything, but like I, I truly believe that like an artist, you know, um, if they have the right intentions for the certain type of work and how they display it and put it through, I think there's like this magic that kind of gets embedded and weaved in there, and and I think that's what people get to read. They don't, they can't necessarily read it like clear, but it's there somehow. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's 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 gonna be tons of found artwork for sure, like copy and paste rips and so forth. Uh, but I think the good ones will be, you know, plucked out and the rest of them will kind of just fall the wayside, you know? Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, the crazier the questions, the better. So feel free to shoot. I don't, and trust me, like, I'm the dumbest one in the room. So just ask anything. Seriously. <laughs> Can you, um, I seen your recent, oh, was someone else going to ask something? Because it's going to be just a nonsense question. It was, it was literally just going to be me and it was going to be another nonsense question. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you riff on, uh, on Whale Shark for a bit? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, like, Whale Shark, um, okay, so basically, like, you know, there was, there was a phase where, uh, during Super Rare, you know, artists were pretty much buying each other's work. So when I got in there, you know, I was buying from Cold, I was buying Cold, I was buying X Copy. Um, and, I'm, and I'm coming from a place where, you know, I was, I was buying Rare Pepe's from other Rare Pepe artists, you know? So trading and buying each other's work was like, that was not a weird thing for me. So, um, so going in there, I started collecting while I was making, you know? Um, and so, um, so when all that stuff was going on, basically, you know, the, the the months that kept going on, we would see people come in and and they weren't artists, and so they were they were buying stuff, and um, and then you know there wasn't really like a collector nomenclature yet put on put on these people, they were just kind of like there and like oh were they an artist? No, there's just some random person. Okay, cool. Um, and then um, after a while, people started building up their collections, and then those people that were buying all of a sudden like. You know, they, they appeared on, you know, Twitter and stuff and um, were starting to say that they were, you know, crypto art collectors. You know, that's how we've kind of, kind of started seeing that, like, okay, these people are actually calling themselves now, that now, right? We can actually discern. Um, and then so um, Whale Shark showed up um, right after Super Rare hit the number one spot on OpenSea. So... From my understanding, um, Whale Shark used to be really big in um, uh, Gods Unchained. He was a gamer, right? So, and Gods Unchained was like the number one um, uh, volume on OpenSea for a long time. Because, you know, just the gaming was, element was the most popular at the time. So, um, so you know, it's funny because right when I saw him, him appear, that was right when Super Rare took the top spot. So I think he just kind of saw like another opportunity to make money, really. Um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know his full intentions, but... I mean, you know, I can pretty much guess like easily. <laughs> but anyways, um, he showed up and then he started he started buying a lot of pieces uh, at like high dollar amounts. You know, kind of came in strong. Um, was buying a lot of pieces from Pac when he showed up. Um, basically, like you know, he, he kind of tried to just like capitalize on the whole thing, and he was just you know, it got to the point where like I couldn't buy pieces because. You know, like he showed up, I was like, damn, you know, like he's pricing me out, you know. <laughs> so, um, but he, I mean, to his credit, I mean, he came in and he, he got a lot of great pieces from a lot of, a lot of great artists. So, 
Um, but you know, as as he came in, it got to the point where um, uh, a lot of artists were obviously happy by his buys and stuff, you know. And so, um, but it got to the point where he started started saying where he started saying a bunch of stuff on Twitter of like how you should conduct yourself as an artist, like this is what you're supposed to do, and and blah blah blah. And like he used to put like articles on Scent, like the, it used to be like a um, it's still there, like Scent.co. Um, where we used to put like articles and stuff. And so he would put articles of like how to be a successful whale and like how to be a successful crypto artist and la 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 la. And, and it was just kind of like this cyclical feedback loop of him, him just kind of like showboating around. And basically I just, you know, I mean, I just had, I, mean, I just had some disagreements and I just basically put out, put it out there on front street on Twitter. I was like, I listen, man, I, I don't, I don't know. I just don't agree with what you're saying. You know? And he bought a couple of my pieces mind you, by the way, uh, during this time. And, uh, and then he threw a little hissy fit and then, uh, you know, blocked me and like, uh, tossed my pieces to some other collectors and stuff. And, uh, and like, that was that, but, um, you know, he started getting into like really weird territory where like he was starting to like, you know, like he got into, um, a couple of, uh, clashes with uh, my buddy Max Osiris and, um, and he started, uh, threatening platforms to like remove him um like he wouldn't buy from their platforms if they didn't if they didn't remove him um and that just really just irked me the wrong way and um you know it's funny like he used to he used to say like you know i I would like disappear into obscurity screw these guys these guys are jokers this and that i'm like okay well i'm still around um (laughs) you know what i mean it's like uh it's just funny stuff but um i it really got to the point where i was like look man like this like this is this is going to be, this is one of those guys, you know, it's like, this is like some guy trying to like uh, flex with money and trying to like uh, tell platforms what to do. And like, he, he's done it multiple times. He did it at the known origin. And then he went over to, to super rare and did the same thing. Um, put super rare in a, between like a rock and a hard place saying, you know, if you don't remove this person, like I will not buy from you guys. And then they make the choice of removing the artist and then he doesn't buy from them. So like he does all this stuff and then like, he doesn't even do what he told him he was going to do. So it was like, um, he basically said a lot of bad tracks and a lot of people saw everything that went down, you know. But the problem was, like, um, you know, I guess for me, it's like I just did not care. Like, I just knew in the future that there would be a lot more collectors in the space. And, like, um, at the time, it was like a really small fish bowl. And he came in like a big fish and just started swimming around and, and just, you know, splashing like crazy but but i knew that the space would grow and and like and soon enough that like that whole this whole thing would be totally insignificant and thank god for that because um uh, because that would really be, be really bad but um but those were my um like my toe to toes with him um and um i mean that's just pretty much history at this point but you know like for me like i just i just had to keep swimming you know i said no matter what and i think this is all the stuff that took place though i think it's actually really good um i don't look back anything like in anger or anything about that stuff like actually um i don't want to say he was necessary but I, i'll tell you what like it was a good challenge to see if i could swim around that type of like influence and trying to like this person trying to like curb the narrative or whatever you know and so so for a crypto artist to be able to like still make it without having these people trying to like derail them, um, definitely was a good test. And, and thank God, like you know, we were able to like get past all that stuff because it still happens too. Like I just heard like recently, like there's another artist who like um, you know was supposed to sell a piece to another collector, and that collector got pissed off, and so then the collector went off to tell other collectors not to buy their work. Like that happens, you know. That's like a that's that's something that does happen here. Like I'm not gonna pretend. That it doesn't happen um which is sad because you know like i the i i champion the artists more than collectors and that will always be um that will always be the case you know like like primarily because i'm the one i'm the high and i felt i don't think they like that but the, the but my my number one reason is that the, the artists were supporting other artists from the very beginning collectors came afterwards and that's how it's always going to be so um so that's my stubbornness you know and i know that some of them like don't like that because i am kind of like loud on my twitter account about some stuff like that um but i just do that because you know i I just i just don't want artists to be like uh uh really really intimidated and not and afraid not to like or afraid to say whatever they want to say you know um dare their collector not might might not buy buy their work you know 
Yeah, dude, um, you're like the people's champ at this point. Like, thank you for the service. Because that oh, welfare no. shit set like a precedent of sorts. Because I don't know, like, it, there's just a, a a really bad taste in my mouth when it comes to that guy now, knowing all that history. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny. I mean, I, I, I when I, whenever I talk about whale shark and stuff, it's like I don't. I mean, I try my best not to like be in like defamatory state, but it's hard because it's like, like a lot of the movies you pull were like, man, like this is really shitty. Like, um, and it's way too early in the game for this stuff to be taking place, you know. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, but I, but but truth be told, though, even with all this bullshit like that happened and like the bullshit that does keep happening in this space, like the the technology itself is the magic of this thing. And I think I, you know, I consider now that like the whale sharks like era and, and other stuff that has happened and taken place in this space, like, um, is those are like the stress tests, you know, to see if like artists can get around that and still make, um, make a decent living and, and, and not have to like coddle those people, you know? And I think, um, I think it's happening because, it just seems to me with like you know the all the community building and stuff that people are doing um that that the network the network and like how people are like acting are like in accordance you know it's like the whole thing was decentralization right so we, we're starting to see like tons of like discord rooms of different families going on you know and so um you know a collector trying to domineer all of that is just pretty much damn near impossible so i do think that like right now even though if, even a lot of stuff that's going on is pretty crazy, but like there is uh, like the technology is helping um, the people have a bigger say than, 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 than the real uh, small sections, you know? Um, and I think a lot of the, I think a lot of collectors online, actually on Twitter secretly are kind of um, kind of getting stressed by that. You know, there's like, you can kind of see, like, sometimes they'll put posts up and they're like, man, you must be mad or something, you know? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like something's not going your way or something. But I, I think, uh, you know, even even with the, like, Board Ape Yacht Club and all this crazy stuff that's going on with PFPs and stuff, like, the community building stuff is pretty cool, you know? Um, it definitely gives power to the crowd and not just a singular element. So, um so yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I try. I, mean, I try my best. You know, I'm not. I'm no. I'm no angel, or you know, uh, I'm not perfect. No, you're either. definitely not an angel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, like but far from it. You know, but 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 if there's one thing that does piss me off is like just people with money that are just trying to flex and force other off artists off of platforms or or deny them like access to um, their possible livelihoods in the future. That for me is number one. It's like, you know, like fuck all that um and so yeah so that that's uh that's pretty much the the whale shark thing there um um one one thing i will say that's uh, that a positive about him is that he has collected a lot of great pieces though he's got a lot of pieces that like i wish i had i'm like damn it like he got them you know but um yeah no no it's, it was a funny saga for sure yeah thanks for that Amazing. Do we have uh, any other question, guys? Yeah, I have a question. <clears throat> so, Rob, as Anubis asked and, and made this parallel between Duchamp's fountain and the trash can and um, the many ways you have to read the short crypto art history with what happened in a longer art history my question is, how do you feel about this, about um, the previous examples of evolution of the art and art system uh, were like developed in a slower pace, I think. And we and, and also you pioneers or everyone in the space has to read this short and super fast history with just those tools. So I wanted to know your opinion on that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's. Uh, I mean, uh, for one, I mean, I'm I'm totally like humbled and honored that even a comparison is made between those two pieces. That that, that just is like mind blowing. But, um, but you know, um, I think, I think what was going on the last two years was. Like a quick read up on on art history, you know. I think uh, I think some of the platforms 
needed a quick brush up on things that have happened in the past. And I think possibly, you know, you know, they, they make they make jokes of like crypto time being like really, really, really fast. It's like it's like one week in crypto world is like, you know, a month or like five months or you know what I mean? Um, so I think maybe within those two years, we were able to compact a lot of like um, crypto art, art debates um, and maybe just kind of like um, close the book on some things and, and, uh, and realize that there's like a long past of art where, of, of art that have, that has already fleshed this stuff out. So I think person probably like for the first two years, it was just like the stress test and, and, uh, and letting these platforms know that like, um, some of this stuff has already taken place and like, don't repeat history, you know? Um, so, so I guess maybe, um, try and trying to answer your question. Like, you know, I think like digital art, you know, digital art moves real quick. Um, I remember Colborn from um, Museum of Crypto Art. He meant, he made a comment. Uh, I think it was like this week or last week, uh, just talking about like the immediacy of like uh, digital art and like um, commentary on on uh, current events at the time. And to be honest, like there, there's some pieces that I made like I literally was commentary on something the day of or something during the week, um, and it's kind of weird because I wasn't really planning on doing that as like a, as like a, an approach to, to my art, you know, but for some reason I just, sometimes I just feel compelled to do so. It's just like, it's just like a instinctual thing. Um, but I mean, it is kind of like memes in a sense, you know, like memes, I guess that's why the memes are so good in the beginning because, um, memes are a very fast form of uh, communication, uh, like with art in a sense, like a visual uh, format. And so it really lends itself well to like current events or things that happened in like the, you know, in, in the internet pretty much, you know? And so, um, so yeah, I think a lot of, a lot, a lot of the old like art debates are getting kind of squashed now. Um, there's going to be some new ones, like obviously like the debate of like one of ones and, and additions and so forth, like that's still going on. And, um, I don't, I'm not sure if we're going to see a result of that debate until like a decade from now. But um, but as far as like uh, like how art is gonna be, um, it's interesting to see like how fast it, it gets made depending on the, the situation of the event that's occurring. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun actually doing that. Um, it just feels natural, I guess. Maybe that's because I was doing the rare pebbles in the beginning. But uh, but yeah, I mean the the last shoot, the last couple months have been kind of interesting. Just uh, just making making commentary on like. Um, where the space is going and how it's developing and um, and what I think it might turn into, even though I don't think it's it's possibly good in some aspects, but um, yeah, yeah. And another thing, sorry, you said uh, some works were commentary to some uh, things that happened in the space. So uh, last one I got uh, uh, the the at least the highlight was when Chili Preston was uh, taken out from object and you stood up for, for him. Can you tell something about this? Oh, the, the Fidenza Toter? Yeah, that, please. Anything. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so he hit me up, um, and, and it wasn't, it wasn't like a complaint. Like he, like, came to me and he was just talking we were just talking about something else and then he brought up the fact that like um his his trash art thing got removed you know and and then of course like i go what i gotta see this right now you know for me i was like i was like okay here we go like then you just hit me in the heartstrings i'm like okay i gotta i gotta i gotta investigate this like right now and uh then it turns out like i guess you know i found out that like you know tyler hobbs you know the generative artist you know um He's been going around and uh, using like just you know legalese to uh, to remove uh, artists that that use the word fidenza um, for for their artwork, right? Um, and so you know I see this fidenza toter that he made. It was like an homage, you know. And for me, it's like it's like why? Well, for one, you know Tyler Hobbs. He's he came he came in like you know about a year ago, and it's like it's like you're doing very well. You know, you're making millions, you know, and it's like, um, and now you're going after like smaller artists 
it, it, it's it's just so web 2.0 to me you know like so old copyright bullshit to me and i was just like this is just not the way like this is not how i came into the space from the beginning i was it, I mean, from day one, it's been open. Like anybody can, you know, make artwork and do your thing and whatever. Um, and so, uh, so I just naturally felt like I had to make something of that. And so, so I asked him. I said, "Do you mind if I remint that?" <laughs> and so I, he goes, he goes, "Go right on ahead." And so, um, so I reminted it on known origin because, because for for one, I was like, okay, where where do I mint this, right? You know, sometimes sometimes I actually choose platforms depending on how like what message I want to convey, you know? So, um, so in this case, in this case, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna, I want to mint this like an actual, in an actual crypto art gallery, you know, because, because I feel like that, that would be more of an effective message, you know? And so, uh, so I reminted it and then I called it, uh, I, I forgot the entire title, but I used the word Fidenza, but I, I changed the I to number one, you know? So it's not technically Fidenza anymore. Um, which is actually kind of ridiculous because Fidenza is the name of an Italian city. Am I correct? Like, and so uh, I didn't know you could actually copyright an entire city name, but that's just, I don't know. I'm not total pro on copyright law, but it's just ridiculous. Um, so, yeah. So, um, so I meant to the piece and, uh, I put it out there and I said, uh, you know, I, I really don't, I really, I really don't like the fact that, uh, Tyler Hobbs going around, uh, taking, sending DCM, D DMCAs to smaller artists they go try to take mine down you know since if you want if you want to start doing this like then remove mine you know um and i didn't hear a peep from him not one not one letter not one message no nothing you know well, so i mean that just tells me that like it, well it's just it's just it's it's really odd it's like okay so you're going after really small artists because you can get away with it like it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like I just did the same thing. You you didn't say anything. Now here's the way I'm looking at this, and it's probably I don't know if he's got people, but he's probably like don't don't. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna look good if you go to toe to toe with Robness on fucking Twitter or some shit. <laughs> like like I, 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 that's what I'm assuming at this point. But the bottom line is like uh, I I just wanted to send a message out really quick, and it was like um, that I just don't respect that. And um, there are other people in the space that have differing opinions about this. And, uh, and I don't want, uh, well, for one, he's silencing people that he knows he can silence. Well, try and silence me. Let's go, you know. Um, and it's kind of like a beef art piece in a sense, you know. Sometimes I make those and, and uh, I don't know, sometimes people are like, oh, you know, that's not, that's not good for the art space or whatever. You know, it's bad vibes or whatever. I'm like, and, uh, and sometimes I quarrel with myself with that too, you know. It's like, is this really good for art in general? But um but the fact that is like you know a fellow artist got silenced got his pieces removed and and to be honest and truth be told it was it was an homage to both me and him and, and to tyler hobbs you know uh in combination so um you know i just it's just like a, part, a, a personal part of me where i see an artist making an homage to somebody and then that person gets their make it takes down their work i just don't like that so um you know I think it's actually good that you said something because, like, that I didn't know Fidenza was named after a city, and that changes things because it's like, if you're gonna, he's like, he literally tried to copyright a name of a city, and it's like, even yeah. if, it, if it gets copyrighted, I, like, I, I'm, as a person who's not American, I'll literally have the same reaction, be like, get the fuck out of here, I'm like, yeah. no, like, what do yeah, you mean? Well, it's I, like, yeah. Yeah, I was just, making the I mean, joke the other day. Yeah, I was I was gonna make a generative generative art collection and just call it Los Angeles and copyright Los Angeles. You know, it's like absolutely ridiculous. You know, so um, and the thing is, is too like he. Well, I think a lot of people in the space are still not well adept at copyright law, which is hilarious because the ones that are making these calls and removing these pieces don't know uh, copyright law that well. So they're so. Um, depending on how successful the artist is, is the artist can literally say anything to to get a piece removed, and it'll get removed. You know, um, so there's a lot of work to be done in that in that regard. I think you know. I, I agree, and it's like it's also just like it's kind of weird that you had to deal with a situation like that because it's like it, it's a it's a bit weird, and it's also. Uh, this is just because I'm reading stuff about uh, Edward Said and colonialism. It's a bit heavy, like it's a bit colonial in a sense, because it's like he literally just, you know, tried to copyright a name of a city. Like if you're from Fidenza, 
and you were like you you say you happened to put that in a piece like you were fucked like fuck you like the original person from fidenza in 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 comparison to like the copyright power it's like it's just to me that's yeah so like yo thanks for doing that because like that's fucked up <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's funny because you're talking about that right now, and I'm like thinking of like, like maybe I should go to F the actual city and start taking photographs and call everything Fidenza, like Fidenza photo number one, Fidenza photo number two. You know what I mean? And see, it's like that's the stuff. Like that's and to be, you know, it's funny. I guess maybe that's kind of my style. Is like once I see something ridiculous and like I'm like I have to make commentary on it, or I have to just like push back against it somehow. Um, when I don't see anybody else doing it, I don't know. It's just, it's just, that's just a part of me, I guess. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much, that's pretty much the gist of of, of that thing. And um, and I even made another Fidenza piece too. I actually, like, I made like a, it was more of like a joke piece. But I took like a, a like a, a a napkin. I took a marker and I just did a bunch of like, you know, squiggles on the mar uh, on the on the napkin, and I put like a couple coffee stains on there. And then, like, I put in Photoshop and inverted it, and like, I just made it as like I just called it a shitty Fidenza with like coffee stains and stuff like that. And like, I, you know, it's just like uh, like human generated, you know, kind of kind of a kind of a funny thing. But but I actually used Fidenza, the actual word on that one, and I didn't hear anything from him. So so I don't know. It's it's just kind of funny. But uh, yeah, I mean, some of my work is definitely reactionary, and uh, um, some people definitely don't like it. But I don't know. Just sometimes I. Uh, I feel like I gotta stick up for some artists, man. That they just they're just trying to have fun in the space, and if they get pushed out, uh, that's not how this space really works, you know. Like, it's supposed to be in kind of inclusive here, you know. So, you know, I, I agree, and it's like, especially now recently, also with like OpenSea taking down. Well, how do you feel about the whole right? Because like a lot of us who entered the space, we got told, you know, decentralization is the way. I know and this. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting you, but I think we, since we have uh, 20 minutes left, I want to see if uh, other uh, residents right now have questions. So sorry about that. If it's not a problem. Thank you. Go Man, anybody's asked crazy questions, just throw them. <laughs> I'll try my best to answer them. But... Well, never mind. Go ahead and we'll be sorry for that. <laughs> I, I, I legitimately forgot what I was completely going to ask, so it's, it's, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely forgot. I, I, if I remember, I'll ask it quickly in the 20 minutes. Yeah, it's probably... Was it centered around Fidenza or... Uh... Trying to think, copywriting or it, I no, I uh, it was uh oh yeah so well like because you know how like the space touts decentralization and we're open and this space is supposed to be for everyone right and then recently we we started to see like open sea start to take down people from Cuba and from countries uh, that are sanctioned right and it's like all of us understand sanction um. But sort of, I, I always, I also always viewed trash art as like one of those things that said like, yo, fuck you to the to these certain limitations that don't make sense, especially in a space that's built towards like openness, right? And I, I was just curious, like, how do you feel like trash art fits into this sort of realm? Because I think it, it's, it's, I think because of like how powerful in its stance trash art has been against certain things, right? It seems, or I, I also was just curious, like, how do you feel about this whole, like, open sea taking that people down for being located in Cuba and shit? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, from the very beginning, when I, when I used open sea, I knew from the get go, it was, it was a centralized platform, you know, it was basically like the uh, coin base of, of, uh, you know, of, of crypto art or NFTs, you know, and I knew that from, the, from the very beginning, just how it's, you know, it's, it's. It's a centralized website, you know. Yeah, you plug you plug your wallet to it, but I mean, every all the other stuff that happens is uh, on their databases and stuff. So, um, the dream of like a actual decentralized marketplace, um, it's still out there, you know. Um, and the cool thing is, 
like my 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 whole like optimistic take on it is like open c is the first step you know it's like the first step to like show that like um you know what, what you can do with with uh tokens on the blockchain and the abstraction of like digital items and so forth so like this is the first step to that the next step the next step is actually going to be people actually developing outside of that system and um providing uh marketplaces that um that circumvent all that you know and then and and they need to exist so and then for me it doesn't matter um as far if it's a popularity contest but but for me the most important thing is that the marketplace has to keep those pieces up you know some some way or some shape or form no matter how um like I don't know, risky it is or whatever. The bottom line is like the internet should be open. You know, that's 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 the magic of it. And so, um, yeah. So I think uh, you know, the the, the technology itself isn't going to go away. You know, the whole decentralized nature of Ethereum it exists. Like that's how the network operates, right? But it's just it's just the things that are built on top have been kind of like, um. You know, people have made compromises. You know, like when OpenSea was made, there was compromises being made. So, um, we just need some more developers that are just really uncompromising. You know, and I think too, like, um, like for example, like Hicket Nunk and stuff like that. Um, those were pretty cool because it's just uh, it's just another step. You know, um, people could re release their artwork anonymously. Um, of course, some pieces were taken down on that platform too, um, but but the the dream of an actual decentralized marketplace uh, it still needs to be still needs to be put out there, and, and and it's like weird. I almost feel like like the marketplace has to be something that you install on your on your computer, you know, like a like a Spotify or something, um, where you load it up and it's like that would be like a node, you know, some type of some type of node. Where everybody connects, um, and and the platform exists by the people that connect to it. So, um, you know, it's it's just a matter of people building these things, and um, and once you have that, I mean, you know, OpenSea can still exist and people will still use it. But at least, at least uh, there'll be another place where you can go and actually like acquire these other pieces that were removed, and and they might potentially be you know historic in their own right. You know, if they were brought back to life, that's another thing too. Um, there's, yeah, there's some, there's some artists that you, like you said, they were removed and, um, and who knows what they're expressing right now. And it'd be nice to see their work. So, um, you know, and there's the whole, you know, crypto punks, the crypto funks thing. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool. The crypto funks made their own pla uh, platform, their own marketplace. So, uh, even though it's centralized on their own, you know, server, but, but they went outside of the open sea system and they, they, they built it. So that was cool. So it's just a matter of time. I think it's just a slow kind of uh, progression, you know. I wish OpenSea would have stuck to their guns a little bit more, but you know, I mean, they've they've become really corporate, and it's like now they have investors and they have to answer to people, and um, that's basically it. I mean, I don't want to say they sold out. I mean, I think they probably their intention was to sell it from the very beginning. So, um, yeah, yeah. So that as far as decentralized marketplaces, we we definitely need them for sure. I'll, I I just unmuted to say it's like what you said is uh, it reminds me of uh, I've, what is it this there's a part in like or at least in a lot of cyberpunk fiction fiction one thing that really interests me is the fact that a lot of the in these stories people end up running their own internal networks that you then plug into and then plug out of and to me I, I always I agree with you in the sense where it's like that's sort of where I see the the people that get uh taken off these websites doing like running their internal website and like sorry their own servers and their own website until we have like like what you said like oh you run your own node and then the website is compromised of the many nodes or run it the cyberpunk stuff sir yeah and uh, you know now i'm thinking about it you know i i wouldn't mind if if i if i had to download a client um for a, for an nft marketplace you know whatever that's not that's not a big deal to me especially if maybe if, if the wallet was actually like in, in, embedded in it too it's not a big deal it's just like opening another window i mean i'm looking at my desktop right now and i got like you know 10 15 apps open but i mean having an nft dedicated nft marketplace in there that that could have all the 
the racy stuff, but also everything else. See, that's the thing about this, right? It's like OpenSea has their whole platform, right? But like if someone could build a actual decentralized marketplace that would reference all of OpenSea's assets as well, um, I think that'd be kind of a good mix, you know? It'd definitely be a nice competitor. Because everybody's like, you know, they were talking about Looks Rare, you know, when Looks Rare came out. Um, and I don't know, I'm not sure where, where Look, Looks Rare is going, you know? I mean, it's they try to pull the whole, you know, um, you know, token drop and then you're earning rewards with the token drop, but like, no, I don't feel like it doesn't, it doesn't feel like anybody's using the actual platform. Like, like if you're going to build a different platform, it has to be somewhat better, you know? And I don't feel, I don't, me personally, I don't feel that looks rare is like that different from open sea. Um, and I think they're just kind of using the token drop mechanism and the, 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 the staking and stuff as like an incentive to stay there. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if if if, if, if someone's going to build the next one, it's got to be even better than OpenSea and faster, and you know what I mean, just more optimized. So, <clears throat> thank you. No, thank you, man. I appreciate it. No, thanks for the questions. Yeah, the weirder the questions, the better, too. Anybody want to say anything? I wanted to ask, I'm sorry, um, what's your to-go song for karaoke? Uh, that's a good one. Uh, okay, so the two to go artists, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I listen to like a lot of rock and roll and stuff and I, I listen to everything pretty much. But if I, if I do karaoke, it's usually, uh, it, it, my, my to go is David Bowie for sure. Either either space oddity or or let's dance um yeah those two those two are my favorite songs to sing uh karaoke um beautiful to, yeah yeah um i'm trying to think i mean it's so weird like karaoke is funny because uh that i i used i used karaoke to to break myself into like singing you know it's like the best place to practice because like or like if if you're afraid to sing or you want to learn how to sing, like go to a karaoke joint because for one, like everybody there is not as good either, right? So you're like you don't have nothing to worry about. You don't have any like critics. Well, there's some there's some people that are like, especially in LA, like there's a bunch of like karaoke bars and stuff where it's like you see the same people every week, right? So they know you, but like uh, you only get a couple of critics, you know, because nobody wants to be a jerk at a karaoke bar, like you know, so. The fact that you don't sound good is it's actually better right but but you can test out like what you sound like or where or, or, or what where, where your voice timbre like fits right so like for example like if you've never like karaoke before it's like you go and just pick a bunch of songs that you like and then like all of a sudden someone will come up to you and be like oh wow that was that was great you know and you probably weren't even trying but maybe your voice lends to that type of um voice as well you know like everybody's got their own type of like tone to their voice and stuff and sometimes like you might be singing a song and you think you might have done bad but then like someone's like man you you sounded right right there with it and so i would actually use i would go to karaoke joints and i would practice karaoke and stuff and do do, do different songs and stuff and see where my voice would land you know so um it's just kind of interesting though yeah no pressure voice positive it's a good thing, yeah. I actually sing Letter to Harmony many times when I karaoke. Yeah, no, I love karaoke joints, man. I, I, I have so much fun. I used to have, a, um, I used to have this uh, like studio lockout space uh, years and years ago. And, you know, I'd have all my music equipment in there and my art equipment and... Um, during breaks and stuff, I'd go across the street. There was this uh, bowling alley, like a really like old bowling alley. Like it just it looks something out of like um, something out of like Big Lebowski, you know, just real rundown kind of like old old decor everything. But like there was a bar inside, and like the bar would throw like karaoke nights like every Wednesday night and Friday and Saturday nights, and like I would, literally would like. You know, if I was practicing in the evening, like I'd finish, I'd finish band practice or whatever, and then I'd literally like just leave 
go have a couple of drinks over there and like just sing my butt off, you know? <laughs> it's good times. Actually, shoot, uh, real quick, okay. I think um, Coldy, Coldy likes to um, he likes to karaoke too. I'm not sure if he's going to do it for uh, NFT NYC again, but I, I didn't go last time. But uh, if anybody goes to NFT NYC uh, and if, if there's a karaoke jammy jam, then um, look us up because I'm pretty sure he's going to do it again. So I'll be there. <laughs> you and Colborn? Colborn does karaoke? Uh, Coley. Oh, okay. I thought there was Coldy. Okay. We're going to be Yeah, there. yeah. Something yeah, like he that. had some like karaoke party or something over there. And that was, out of all the things I saw in the pictures, I was like, damn, I missed that. <laughs> like, besides the event, actual event, I was like, man, I wish I could have gone to that, you know? So. You know, sir, be careful. The next day you're going to wake up with a, with a bunch of videos of you karaoke minted on the blockchain forever. Oh my god, I know, right? Oof. Gotta watch out. <laughs> Gotta bring it. <laughs> I know, yeah, that, that's gonna be the new thing, huh? It's like uh walking around, people are like filming, like, you gonna mint that? <laughs> you better not mint that. No. It's like somebody like that might actually become a thing where it's like you, you know, you become uh NFT paparazzis. <laughs> They just come around, take pictures of you, and then mint them on the blockchain and sell them to like the highest NFT magazine or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, it's like it got flipped four times in an hour. <laughs> and it's like the wrong rumor yes, too. Like, oh god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and the thing is, you know, we're talking about that. That's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Like, I can already see that for, for sure, man. Not saying it's good, but it's just an inevitability. You know, it's funny with the, with a lot of the NFT stuff. Like, I've been getting some like messages from people, and they've been complaining about how the space has been going and stuff like that. But but a part of me like realizes like, look, when when things go like fully into like pop culture territory, like there's some inevitabilities that are going to happen, and all this stuff is just. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I knew a lot of this stuff would take place. Um, I didn't sh I didn't know how, but I knew that you know. I mean. When when things get popular, man, a lot of a lot of ridiculous things start popping out too. So um, it's kind of weird. It's like sometimes I just gotta like laugh in a tornado um, instead of like like bickering about it. You know, there's, there's, it's just like why even be mad about it? It's just like I just gotta focus on what I'm doing and just like make sure that it's legit. You know, and I think um, like a lot of like OG crypto artists too have kind of gotten a little bit bitter, and um, I don't know. You know, I guess it's it's part of it is like, you know, some projects really blow up and then they're left in the dust and kind of in like, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff going on. But um, but for me, it's just like it's kind of weird. It's like I kind of enjoy it. Like I enjoy all the all the crazy stuff that's going on. Like I'm, t I'm, I'm taking more of like an Andy Warhol stance, you know, like Andy Warhol was really like he accepted a lot of the absurdity that was going on no matter what, like. Um, even though people would be like, what? How could you say you, you don't care about this and this, this and that, you know? Um, but, but, uh, but also, like, a part of me is, like, you know, it, like, there's, there's, like, there's a time, like, and a place for certain things, and then they die off, you know? It's kind of like, I look at the PFP stuff like Skrillex, like, like Skrillex and Dead Mouse when they first came out in, like, EDM. Like, when they first came out, like, well, when I saw Skrillex, I was like, oh, man, like, <laughs> like I mean, I like a lot of electronic music, but I was, I'm not. A, I wasn't a big fan of Skrillex, you know. And I was like, just, I'm like, this can't last, you know. And you know, he had a good run for about a good what five, six, seven years or something like that. And then like, you know, everything kind of fizzled out, you know. So I think it's the same thing with this PFP stuff too. So um, yeah, I'm just 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 riding it, you know. Just just trying to enjoy it though, you know. Find your own little niche in there and. And just uh, not not have to like pay so much attention to it. Wait, all right. Since we're getting, if anybody doesn't have any more questions, I guess, and we're, I'm gonna ask like, what's the wildest NFT you've owned? 
like the craziest like not it's not something like oh it's conceptually cool no just something that you look at and you're like what the fuck was i thinking why like i look at a crypto junk and i look i'm like i don't even know why i bought this <laughs> Oh man, the, the wackiest M, uh, wackiest NFT. I got to think about this. Give me one. That's a good question, man. Yeah, I remember somebody on in one Discord was like, "Yo, dude, somebody's like giving uh, punks dicks and vaginas," and I was like, "That makes <laughs> sense. I will buy it." <laughs> uh, I got gifted a crypto perv. I don't know if you've heard of those. Um, no, what are they? Yeah, yeah. If you type like crypto perv on uh, on OpenSea, you'll see them. They're just like really like they're like well, they they did one of me, and then they sent it to me. But it's like like basically, it's just all these characters that are just really like fat, like just just gross looking. Like it's just like, and they have like yeah, yeah. And they got like the the beard, the I don't know the half cut beard. It's just like. They all they're all dirty looking, but uh, yeah, I was gifted one of those. That's kind of funny. Um, as far as like, let me see what I got here, man. <sighs> let me look. I'm switching accounts here for a second. But yeah, that was that was the funniest one. Um, oh man. Oh, I'll, I can tell you guys a uh, a controversial NFT that I got because I pissed off a collector. Sure. <laughs> this, yeah. Okay. So, and it's funny. I I really don't care, uh, but other people were like, "I can't believe that! I can't believe he did that!" So, there's a collector. His name's Moderats. Yeah, and um, he was having some spat on Twitter or something about about something, and, and I and I and I kind of chimed in, and I I just told him I was like, I, I disagree with that man. You know. And I didn't hear much. I didn't hear a response, you know. And then all of a sudden, like, I got a, I got a, a, a death NFT from like a, an ex copy death NFT from him. Like, like he sent me a message via, via NFT, basically, you know. And and that was that. Yeah, yeah. So so there was so that there was that, you know. Um, and I kind of laughed about it actually. And I and I sent it back to him too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can do that. Like, yeah, wait, hold on. No, take it back. <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, I sent it back. I was like, um, but yeah, that was the weird. I think that was the weirdest NFT I ever got. It was an actual reactionary, like, like hate NFT that I got. It was like, yeah, kind of funny. And he and he stopped buying my work after that. That was it. He sent me that, and then like he stopped buying my work from that point on. Damn, that is one way to tell an artist I'm not buying yeah. your work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's so funny because from time to time I joke around with him, you know, like like I'll wave to him. I'll say, "Hey, hi, Moderats," you know, like on Twitter and stuff. Like I don't get any response, you know. I I think I got one response, but uh, it was a long time ago. But yeah, like he's kind of in the shadows right now. He used to, he used to be more he used to be more active, but um, he still buys pieces all the time. Um, He's just not like as visible as he used to be. Um, but he actually, you know, his history is kind of interesting though because he, um, he's he's very like well he's kind of mysterious actually. Um, he has a, he has a Twitter account and stuff, but he never really says too much. You know, he mostly does most of his talking is by buying really. Um, but there was a point in time actually um, during um, during Super Rare where. Um, they were going to change the bidding structure and like how they were going to, how, um, you know, the bidding was going to go for the pieces and stuff. And he really hated it. And basically like went on a whole tirade about, um, about that stuff. And, uh, and it got to the point where people were making artwork about it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, so he, he's a funny guy. I'm not sure where he's from. I think he's, some people said he's Spanish or something, but I don't know. But, um, but yeah, that's the funny funny weird little instance with nfts and uh collectors thanks um thoughts on the singularity and what you're going to be doing when that happens 
Yo, that's fast. Yo, that's a good question. Oh, man. That's... Woof. Um, okay, so I've been kind of preparing myself for that because uh, I've been, like, using, like, artificial intelligence, like, for art pieces and stuff. Just getting my, like, hands wet with it and just kind of get, like, getting, like, getting a feel of it. And I don't know. A lot of people are, like, afraid of, uh, you know, being out, out competed with, like, you know, super intelligence and artwork and stuff. But it's so weird because, like, like I have this, I have this, I have this weird belief in, in, in like, the absurdity of, like, human beings, you know? That, like, no matter what a super intelligence does, like, we won't care. Like, like I, 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 could, I could totally see in myself where it's like a super intelligence just shows up and is like, look, I made this planet. Isn't that great? I'd be like, yeah, that's cool. But it's because it's like, it's because like I know the super intelligence made it. You know what I mean? And it's, so it's not that interesting. You know what I mean? It's really weird. It's like, like I'll be that critic where it's like, oh, he, he just, like the super intelligence totally just made this out of like thin air. And I'm like, oh, that, well, that's what, that's what it does. Right, like, <laughs> like I can totally see like human beings just being super, super critical of like the most crazy advancements that like uh, super intelligence could do. You know, it's almost like the Doctor Manhattan thing. Like he does all this amazing stuff, but it's like the rest of the human race is like, ah, you know. And then he's just like, he's just like, ah, screw it, you know. But um, I'm not saying that we're arrogant. I just think that there's like human beings have a certain respect for other human beings and like the due diligence of the work that they put in. Right. So it's like. Like, even for something that's very simple, like, like, you know, I don't know, like making shoes. It's like, it's like this person spent like all this time to make this high quality like shoe, but then a super intelligence is right next to him and like blurts it out in five seconds. It's like, I kind of like dig this one because the human made it, you know, and it's just like my connection as a human to that human. So, so like a lot of this stuff, like with, with the, the singularity and like, um, just things that are going to happen after that fact. I think the human beings are just going to enjoy the ride while they're on it, you know? Um, we're still going to be able to do stuff ourselves. I mean, granted, super intelligence will do, like, by far, like, more, like, crazy things. But um, but what I'm noticing with, like, messing with the artificial intelligence and stuff and artwork is, like, it's just another tool, right? So, like, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm collaborating with the machine. But I'm like, not really. Like, like the the last couple of pieces i've been looking at like currently like i'm i'm, I'm messing with you know vq gone stuff and um you know you type a phrase in and and the image you know and then you know the artificial intelligence will uh will generate that image for you and very well might i add they've they've gotten really really good with it um but it's weird because it's like you know you'll type the phrase and it comes out with some it comes out with four different iterations and you're like okay well that's cool um but i think but really, I think what humans are good for is like finding something that actually connects with us um, out of all those generations. So, for example, like, like I'll type a phrase and I'll, I'll make like I'll make a hundred or two hundred different generations of these things. But there's gonna like I'm so discerning. It's like there's only one of them that's gonna be like like good enough for me. You know what I mean? There's, that says something to me. Um, and I think that's like just that's the human element that can't be like quantified. And I think that's the uh, kind of the saving grace of like for us, really. Um, so I, I don't know. It's weird. I kind of gave up the ghost of like being afraid of what's going to happen after that, after that event happens. Um, you know, because I think uh, I think human beings are pretty beautiful. And I tell you what, I mean, I'm, I don't want to take, I don't want to assume any super intelligence. But from from my perspective, uh, the more intelligent a human becomes, the more like it's weird. It's like for the most case, for the most part, at least from my perspective, is like the more intelligent and aware people become, like the more compassionate they are about their surroundings, you know. So, so for me, like a like a super intelligence, I think yeah, I think it would appreciate um, human beings for what they are, you know, and um, maybe help them in a sense, you know, not try to enslave them, maybe try to like exemplify their beauty in a sense. I think that that would that would be more of a cooler world in my opinion than than trying to just use them for resources or something so um yeah i don't know yeah that's the, the, those are those are my thoughts on it at least cool so i i, I can't create a response or no because i'm uh i'm in the middle yeah, of I, I, was, 
but yeah. I was throwing up 100s. I was if I could throw up 100s, I would be throwing up 100s. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? What's up, Nicole? Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Rob. This is amazing. I it's always so great to to have you on and like hear your your. I really enjoyed the conversation that you and and Ubis were having. To be honest, it was great. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm 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 glad. I I, I like when sometimes the conversations go into different directions. You yeah, know? yeah. Thank you so much, Rob. It's it's always uh, super nice to have you on, and I hope uh, yeah everyone enjoyed it. Have a good rest yeah, of no, your Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for the questions, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll Bye, see guys. you on space with we'll, we'll Yeah, you most space. definitely. Yeah, you got it. All right. See you guys. Much love. See you. Peace.